Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome, everyone. High rollers time. And a few weeks ago, we looked at some of the biggest uh, card value drops over the last two years. But today, I wanted to switch it around and look at some of the biggest value increases uh, in cards and decided to use Robert Edwards auctions as they uh, have you know history records of all their auctions going way, way back. And I wanted to go back over a decade. So we're looking at cards that were bought between 2007 and 2012 and looking at uh, how much they've increased in value to today. Two things that really jump out when you look at high-end sales back uh, 10 to 15 years ago versus today. Uh, first is it's all baseball. High-end sales you know, back uh, in 2007 to 2012, 95% baseball. And uh, the second thing that's very notable is that it's all vintage. There is no, there were no high-end modern sales, you know, five-figure sales of modern cards or, or, or very, very, very few. Uh, back then, whereas you know today it's it's a lot more modern than vintage. We'll jump right in after I mention that this week's list is brought to you by Hoodies Collectibles. They're a consignment company that will sell your cards for you via eBay auctions. I've been using them myself for a couple of years now as part of my overall selling strategy. Great customer service. They get your cards listed fast and they get you paid quickly as well, much faster than some of the other companies. They've uh, recently lowered their selling fees. And, and think about this chart for a second. If you sell a card through Hoodies for let's say two hundred dollars. Well, you're paying 14% commission. That's all in. I mean, if you sold a card yourself on eBay, that's about what eBay would charge you. Uh, but they do all the scanning, the listing, the shipping, the dealing with customers. They do all that for you. Plus, your item is being auctioned by an account with a lot more eyeballs on it than a uh, standard eBay account. If you're looking to sell some cards, I recommend you give them a try. I've included their info in the description below. And I thank Hoodies for sponsoring this week's High Rollers. Looking at 10 sports card value increases that were bought from Robert Edwards Auctions between 2007 and in 2012. All right, let's check out our top 10, and I'm actually going to put the honorable mentions at the end this time. These honorable mentions are particularly interesting with this one, but there are uh, they're a lot of lots and sets and stuff like that that I really couldn't calculate the, the percentage change. But that's how we're going to rank the top 10 here is by uh, percentage change. Uh, starting off at number 10 is one of the only two non-baseball cards on our list, and that's 1948 Leaf, number 34, Sammy Ball Rookie, graded a PSA near mint mint. Eight. And uh, since these cards were all graded at least 10 years ago, or, or, or in most cases more, it'll be interesting to see how the, the PSA grade looks uh, today. Yeah, I mean, 8 looks looks all right here. A little off-center left to right, uh, but nothing else jumps out. The back looks clean. If this was in an 8 holder today, I would, would not really uh, question it. This sold back in 2007 uh, for $12,925. That's all in with the buyer's premium. Uh, this card hasn't changed a whole lot, to be perfectly honest. Today... I would estimate a, a, a PSA 8 would sell for about 16200 or actually that was the, the last sale of a PSA 8. And you can see the pop count's really not changed at all. Back in 2007, it was a pop 11 with only one higher. Uh, today, it's just a pop 12 with only one higher. So in the last 15, 16 years, there's only been one extra copy graded in 8. Uh, and that's it at the really, really high end level. Anyway, that was a 25% increase over the last 16 years. Number nine is our only other non-baseball card here in the top 10, and that's, again, 1948 Leaf, although a different sport this time. Number 50, Rocky Graziano, rookie, graded a PSA EX5 and 5. Yeah, it might be a tad generous uh, compared to today. Off-centered pretty significantly left to right. It's also off-centered top to bottom, maybe even a bit of a slant cut. If you look at, say, the top border looks a little bit wider towards the right than uh, towards the left. Uh, and surface looks really, really clean. Edges are, are nice. Uh, corners are a bit tipped, and upper right corner is notably tipped. Back is very, very clean. Uh, five, again, you know, maybe a bit generous compared to today's standards, but not terrible. I think this card more likely grade a four, but again, I don't think a five is, is way off the mark. This sold in 2011 for $41,125. This is Graziano's first ever appearance on a High Rollers top 10 list. Welcome, Rocky. The most recent sale of a PSA 5 was for 50, uh, 57600 so that's a 40% increase. The pop report was a little bit weird as the uh, the ad for this one back in 2011 said it was a pop 2 with one higher, but today there are uh, three PSA 5s and none higher, so I don't know what happened to that one higher, but uh, yeah, there you go. Number 8, 1909-1911, T206, Eddie Plank. Graded a PSA X Mint 6, and this was graded before they started putting the uh, back variations on the PSA label. You can see it just says T206. It doesn't say, uh, what, in this case, it should say T206 Sweet Capital, but uh, yeah, it just says T206 there on the label. Another one that's probably a little overgraded by compared to today's standards, uh, pretty off-centered there, left to right, 
and some sort of light staining along the borders, most notably at the bottom. Again, six isn't like way off, but I would say this is, you know, if you sent this in today, I'd, I'd guess it's more likely to grade maybe a five. The back is really nice other than, uh, again, also being very, very off center there. This sold in 2009 uh, for $188,000, and uh, the most recent sale of a PSA 6 went for $312,000. So that's about a 66% increase. You can see the pop report has not changed on this card at this uh, PSA 6 and above level. Still a pop 3 uh, with 5 higher as it was 14 years ago. Number 7, you're going to notice a lot of pre-war stuff on this list here. 1915 Cracker Jack, number 88. Christy Mathewson graded a blistering PSA Mint 9, and uh, yeah, PSA Mint 9 looks fair, uh, reasonable by today's standards, a little off center left to right, but I think within the PSA 9 uh, level, and I don't see anything else wrong with it, perfect surface, edges and corners, razor sharp, back looks uh, really, really clean and, and nice as, as well. This sold in uh, 2009 for $41,125. Most recent sale of a PSA 9 went for $78,000, which represents about a 90% increase in value over the last 14 years. Again, another one that there has not been a, a change in the pop report. It was a PSA 6 with none higher back in 2006, uh, back in 2009, and it still is that today. So no, obviously no 9s or 10s have been submitted in the last 14 years. Number six, 1933 Gaudi, number 106, Napoleon Lajway, also graded a PSA Mint 9, and a, yeah, a little off-centered left to right. Corners and edges basically perfect. Cardstock seems a little bit sort of, uh, uh, you know, stained or off-white. I don't know what you would call it. Same thing on the back, just a little bit off-white of the cardstock. I don't know how PSA would, would handle that today, but this sold in 2012 for $118,500. Uh, the most recent sale of a PSA 9. Went for three hundred and forty thousand dollars. Here's where you're going to start seeing some really significant price increases. That's a hundred and eighty-seven percent increase. Basically, it's uh, tripled in value or so in the last eleven years. And again, another one where the pop report has not changed on this card in the last eleven years. It was a pop nine with none higher then, still is today. So obviously, no nines or or tens have been submitted in the last eleven years. Number five, nineteen ten T two hundred and ten Old Mill Series Eight. Jackson, and that's a uh, shoeless Joe Jackson for an entering wondering. We had a PSA VG plus 3.5, and again another one where you know the grade's not like wildly off or anything, but uh, yeah, I don't think today this would get a 3.5. There's enough uh, corner and edge wear at the top there to, you know, the, I think it would probably grade lower than that, 2.5 maybe, maybe a three at at best. But uh, back is all right, although it definitely has some staining. That's pretty standard for uh, cigarette cards this old. This sold back in uh, 2011 for just short of $200,000, and uh, the most recent sale of a PSA 3.5 was in 2019. It was actually this exact same card as it's a Pop 1, and it went for $600,000. So a 200% increase, the card has tripled in value in the last, uh, well, in those eight years, but uh, we're calling the value today $600,000 since there hasn't been a sale since 2019. Again, Pop 1 with one higher, no changes to the Pop Report on this card whatsoever. Number four, Shoeless Joe going back to back. How about that? We should have all put our money in Shoeless Joe Jackson cards back in 2010. 1909 E90-1 American Caramel Shoeless Joe Jackson graded a PSA EX5. And another one, you know, five seems basically reasonable. A little off-centered left to right. Uh, corners are a little bit rounded, but really nothing major going on here. If this was sent in today, I would more likely guess a four, but I guess it's fair to say that a, a five would be in play. Uh, the back actually looks uh, very nice. Sold back in 2010 for $44,063. There uh, has not been a sale of a PSA 5 copy of this card since that one. Uh, all the way back in 2010, that was the last sale of a PSA 5. I looked at some of the other grades and, and, uh, of the card and what the sales were, and I would estimate a PSA 5 would sell today for around $200,000 based on those other comps. Uh, it's just a guess, but you know my, my best uh, guess scenario here. And so that would represent a 354% increase. Basically, the card has quadrupled and a half since 2010. Quadrupled and a half? Is that the, the way to say that? Probably not. But it's a pop three with four higher. Back then, it was a pop three with two higher. So there have been two higher uh, graded copies than this one submitted uh, since 2010. 
Number three, obviously we're going to see one of these, just uh, wondering where it was going to land. 1952 tops, number 311, Mickey Mantle, graded an SGC X Mint 6, or X Near Mint 6 as they called it, and much older SGC label as obviously it had to be, given that this sold uh, 15 years ago. And back when they had both, uh, both of their scales on the label, so originally SGC started with a 1 to 100 scale, and they used that exclusively for a while, but at some point it just became industry standard to use the 1 to 10 scale, so they added it. Uh, originally this was just an SGC 80, but they added the 1 to 10 equivalent, which was a 6, and eventually they obviously dropped the 1 to 100 scale as nobody, you know, nobody was using it, and they just used the standard 1 to 10 scale that everybody else does. But 6 here looks uh, looks all right. Yeah, that looks about right. I, the card's significantly off-centered left to right, uh, pretty significantly off-centered, but that's really the only thing to point to. Everything else looks sharp. Corners, edges, surface are all very, very clean. Back looks looks great. So a six, I think, is probably about yeah about what you would expect to, today or so. Sold back in uh, 2008 for thirty-five thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, and we already know this one's going to see a huge jump as uh, the most recent SGC six sale went for hundred and ninety thousand dollars. That's a four hundred and thirty-nine percent increase. Still waiting on that time machine. Number two, also knew we were going to see one of these, but also just wondering where it was going to land. 1909 to 1911, T206, Honus Wagner, graded a PSA Poor Fair 1, and uh, obviously a much older PSA label. And this was back when they called a 1 Poor Fair before they even had half grades when they changed uh, Fair to a 1.5. So very, very old PSA label. And again, they didn't put the back variations on the label at this point. It just says T206, whereas it should say T206 uh, Sweet Capital. One is exactly what this card would grade today. Uh, it was heavily creased all around. There's even a pinhole towards the top, rounded corners, etc. It is uh, centered pretty well if you want to have some uh, some positivity there. Back looks, uh, yeah, basically what a we would expect a, a one to look like. This sold for $399,500 back in 2009. And uh, this exact card, the, the exact serial number and all, sold again in 2022 for $3,136,500. The, uh, again, exact same card, exact same serial number. 685% increase in value over that, uh, what is that, 13 year stretch there. And the pop reports changed a little bit on this one, not much. Back in 2009, this was a pop nine with 15 higher. Today, it's a pop 10 with 16 higher. So if you do the math there, that means in the last uh, 13 years, there has been one PSA 1 uh, submitted, and there has been one card graded higher than a PSA 1 submitted uh, to PSA in that time frame. And number one, 1915 M1015 Sporting News Blank Back, number 151, Babe Ruth, graded a PSA Near Mint 7, and this is the, the biggest value increase card percentage-wise that I could find from, uh, from those Robert Edwards auctions so many years ago. Seven is, again, maybe a little generous. Definitely off-centered left to right there. Pretty significant. I don't know that it would uh, qualify for a seven today. Corners and edges, everything else looks great, though. Corners and edges uh, look great. Uh, surface looks very, very clean. The back is extremely faded. So faded I can't even read the words on the back there. That's obviously a bad joke as this is a blank back. Sold in 2008 for $44,062. The most recent sale of a PSA 7 went for $384,000. That's a 771% increase. Nice return for anybody who uh, parked their money in this card back in 2008. They didn't provide the pop report numbers in the listing back then, so I don't know what it was back in 2008, but today the card is a pop three with three higher. All right, let's check out some honorable mentions, and there's some amazing stuff on here. Surely some stuff with huge value increases, but uh, as we all know, my, my research department is a bit limited, both in numbers and intellectually. Uh, check out this card here, 1869 Peck and Snyder Red Stockings Baseball Club of Cincinnati, uh, graded a PSA Authentic, and this card is considered by many to be the first ever baseball card ever, 1869 PSA Authentic, and the reason I have this on honorable mentions is because there has not been another sale of this card since this one. This one sold back in 2011 for $35,250. No idea what it would sell for today. Look at this collection of 1886 to 1890 N172 Old Judge Tobacco cards. 592 cards in this collection. $211,500 back in 2009. Uh, 1909 T204 Ramley Cigarettes Complete Set. That's a 121 card set. Every card is graded by SGC. 
$70,500. These would all go for a lot more than that today. How about a 1909-1911 Tito 6 complete set? Missing the big four, uh, 520 of the 524 cards, and many consider the set complete without those those four cards, as uh, those four cards are so impossibly rare, being the Honus Wagner, the Eddie Plank, the Doyle, and the Sherry Maggi error. But uh, every card is graded by PSA, and at the time, it was the number seven ranked set on the PSA set registry with an overall average grade of 5.65. Absolutely incredible. You can see three of the Cobbs in this photo here getting a five, the green portrait's a four, and the red portrait is a six. This sold in 2009 for $176,250. No idea what it would sell for today, but, but I would be really surprised if it was under a million. 1916 Tango Eggs, a near complete set, 16 of the 18 cards in the set, and at the time it was the number one ranked set on the PSA set registry. I'm not even familiar with these cards, so obviously uh, incredibly rare. Sold for $58,750 back in 2007. 1952 Topps Baseball, complete set. Every card is graded, 407 cards in the set. Most of them are graded by PSA with a few uh, by SGC. Generally a mid-grade set with a few higher grade. The mantle is a six. It went for uh, $105,750 back in 2009. The mantle alone is worth more than double that today. Run through a few more complete sets. All of these have at least doubled, tripled, I don't know, but certainly these have jumped way up in value since then. 1957 Topps Baseball complete set at the time. It was the number nine ranked set on the PSA set registry. With, uh, including 77 PSA 9s, went for $52,875 in 2009. 1959 baseball complete set, uh, was the number 11 set on the PSA set registry at the time in 2007, $38,000 and change. 1967 Topps baseball complete set, it was the number 8 ranked set on the PSA set registry, $41,125. Again, these are all sets that have gone way, way up since then. This one is just sort of interesting. 1975 Topps Mini Baseball Card Assortment, 20,000 uh, plus cards. This is a, they were all described as pack fresh uh, cards here and went for $38,188. I don't know if there were like major stars were included, but it's basically $2 a card. Uh, just, just sort of an interesting one. And there was some football. It's basically, like I said, almost all baseball. But here's a 1949 Leaf Football Complete Set. This was the number one ranked set on the PSA set registry back in 2010 with a GPA of over 7.5. $23,500, a near complete set of 1935 National Chickle Football, uh, 31 of the 36 cards, every card was graded by SGC, 15 grand plus, and a 1975 Topps Football Factory Sealed Cello Case, uh, $16,450 back in 2009. But that's it, your top 10 this week featured two Shoeless Joe Jackson and one each of Eddie Plank, Honus Wagner, Babe Ruth, Sammy Baugh, Christy Mathewson, Mickey Mantle, Napoleon Lajway, and newcomer Rocky Graziano. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back to our regular sort of top 10 list uh, again next week. Tomorrow is regular rollers and see you all again real soon. Thanks everyone.